What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in this video we're going to actually be picking up objects in the game and interacting with them. Currently you can see I've just set up a cube, a big little cube here with three little cubes on top which are going to have different interactions we can do um, with our little items here. So we'll be able to actually pick these up and move them around. That's what the plan is to do. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's actually add in some interactions to our cubes. Okay, guys, so the first thing we want to do is actually go to our hands and we want to add in a XR direct interactor. Now, there's multiple different interactors inside of this. There's also the ray interactor and the socket interactor. Um, both of them do different things. The one we are going to be focusing on today is the direct interactor, which allows us to directly con uh, touch and actually uh, interact with objects in our world. Now, on top of this direct interactor, we need this interaction manager, which is actually added into the game up here. You can see I've just added an empty game object and added in the XR interaction manager. Um, that will automatically be applied to this. So you don't have to drag it and say it here, but it's just there. Uh, it's just needed to actually interact with things in the world. The interactor on your hands also needs a collider to know when it's interacting with something so we're going to add a sphere collider to this uh, to our hands we're also going to set these as triggers and put them down to a much smaller size so we can only interact with things when they're within this range of our hand now the next thing we're going to look at is the simple interactor so if we select the blue clue cube here i'm going to call this blue cube uh, this is going to be the green cube and this one is going to be the red cube oh. There you go. So let's go to the blue cube, cube and we're going to add in a simple interactable. So there's two different types of um, things you need when interacting with things. You need an interactor, which is what we add on our hands to interact with things. And we need an interactable, which means this can be interacted with. So we have our simple interactor here. And as you can see, there's a few different things here. Again, it has an interaction manager that's needed, which is up here. We have colliders. Now, this is where you add the colliders that are to do with this element. So if you if your colliders are not on this game object, you need to drag them in here. However, our box collider is on this object, so we don't need to drag it into here. It will automatically grab this box collider for us. Now, what a simple interactor does is it doesn't necessarily allow you to grab items. Um, or uh, move them. What it does allow you to do is uh, call events when things happen. So if you hover over an item and um, you, let's say you just put your hand in it, it will then call the hover event, which will, um, you can call any function here. You can have it blow up a massive ship, do what you want. For this example, we are just gonna take the blue cube. When we enter it, we're gonna go to the mesh renderer and change the material. If I can see where material is, there it is. And we're just gonna change the material to let's say white or something similar. We then need to copy this um, and paste it here, which we're gonna change back to blue when we exit the hover event. So when we hover into it, it will turn white. When we hover out, it'll go back to blue. Now there's a bunch of other things here as well. So you can see here we have select, which is when you grip something. So you could make it so when you actually press the grip trigger, once you're touching it, it will turn red instead or something like that. Um, let's just do that anyway. So when we press the grip, we're going to make it go red. We then want to say when exited, we go back to uh, its default blue color there. You can also do activate, which with your top two trigger buttons, but we're not going to do that for this one. It's just to show off the different interactions you can do. So this has got a simple interactor on it, and that's all you really need to know for this one. Let's go to the other two, and I'm going to highlight both and add in a grab interactable. Now, this actually allows you to pick up the items. However, for the green one, we are going to set it to be instantaneous. And for the red cube, we're going to change its movement type to velocity tracking. Now, let me just explain why. So in here, you can see we have instantaneous. This means it will snap straight to your hand and become a, a child of your hand. Um, it will basically just allow you to um, grab it as it is and it will just snap. It won't have physics. You'll be able to move it through objects and just nudge other ones as well. But there won't be actual physics applied to it. It'll just be like a block moving with a, a box collider on it. 
The red cube, however, we're adding velocity tracking. This, there's another one called kinematic and velocity tracking. Both of these apply some sort of physics in some way. So this uh, kinematic one will allow you to actually hit other blocks and do other things, but it doesn't allow, it still allows you to pass through items. Whereas velocity tracking, once you try to drag this block through an item, it will actually apply real physics and it will not go through this uh, table. It won't go through all this. It will interact with things as a physics object would. Personally, this is my favorite because it gives you the most realism um, in terms of actually hitting through things you won't be able to clip through other blocks. Uh, but for performance, the simple interactor, if you don't need it to hear things, you're better off sticking with that. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we are in the world. Now, let's start off with the simple interactor. The way we interact with this is literally just putting our hand in. And if we grip, you can see it goes red. And you can see we get the red. When we hover in it, it's white. If we grip it, it is red as well. And when we let go, it goes back to blue. So you can see that's a good way to interact with things. You could have this as a simple button. So when you just put your hand in it, a chip explodes or something like that. You can mess around with this however you want. Now, the next one is the instantaneous um, grab interactable, which as you can see, it grabs in. But we can just go straight through here. We can nudge other objects, but you can see the physics are a bit weird. It's clipping through it and it's a bit, you know, it's not very... Um, useful if you want to make actual physics let's drop this one let's stack it on top of that one uh, and if we grab, grab this one you can see it's actually moving in a weirder way it's actually got real physics as you can see we can knock things over and as i'm hitting this you can see it's not clipping through it it's actually just hitting it nicely if we try to go through the desk you can see that it's not going to go through it just hits it straight away like an actual block and there you go you can see the direct uh, the velocity tracking interactor is way more um physics based and it's way more realistic than anything uh, for the other two there you go so you can see we have just this standard interactor where you can't actually pick it up the velocity tracking grab interactable and then there's the direct or simple instantaneous grabbing so that's going to be it for this video guys you can see here we have just set up some simple interactions in a game being able to grab objects inside of vr which is really awesome uh, in the next video, we can either add movement to make our games, we can move around, jump around, or we can add in something else like uh, ray, uh, teleportation, so we can teleport around the world as well. Let me know which one you'd rather see down below in the comments. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. It's been a fun one, and hopefully you enjoyed it too and learned something new. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.